Hello everyone. In tonight's video I'm gonna touch a certain uh, subject and that's my favorite flies for trout and grayling. But these are like my all-time favorites and I'll tell you why I like them, what's important about them, how to tie them and how to fish them. Uh, so let's go into tying and discussing these things. It's probably gonna be a lengthy video uh so if you know how to make pheasant tail hairs here there should be probably something you can learn along the video so i really suggest that you watch all of it uh i know it's lengthy one so i hope you have time for that and thank you all for watching my videos and i really really guys appreciate it so i'll start with a very thin thread in this case it's gsp by semperfly you can use any thread and I'm gonna tie uh, pheasant tail first the my as I said my two favorite flies nymphs in this case are pheasant tail and here's here definitely uh, with some variations of course and I'll tie those versions that I like the most and I ha I think they have more most triggers and those variations that are going actually to be the most useful for you guys uh, so I'll start with the thread as, as I said and then I'll attach just a little bit of wire wire is necessary for reinforcing your fly especially pheasant tail which is quite a fragile and material and sensitive to trout's teeth now try to keep the body slender slim uh, the reason behind it is uh, you want it to sink faster and by a lot of having slimmer body your fly will sink faster next one is quantity of materials so depending on the fly size obviously you're going to use three four five six hurls doesn't hurls uh, align the tips if you can and then just uh, place it like so with your dominant hand measure the, the tail length and then just transfer hands with pinch and loop catch it and pinch your uh, pinch your uh, tail with like two wraps and then just a couple of wraps in front to keep everything in place now as you go towards the bead uh, this is going to be locked now uh, the, the, the feather tail nymph is I cannot call it a perdigon nymph but it has those properties if you tie it without any additional features like uh, legs, CDC legs, whatever. If you tie it sparsely with just pheasant tail and thorax, it's behaving almost like perdigon because it doesn't make too much resistance when it's sinking to the water, through the water column. Now go with your hurls the opposite way than you did with that uh, thread. And it's for obvious reasons, I hope. It's to, again, reinforce your fly do everything you can to reinforce your flies guys because we are fishing some toothy critters that are destroying our flies and by not changing flies very often during fishing we are actually catching more fish as well so okay now rib counter rib that's why i did this the opposite way now in the same way i was mounting the thread i'll mount the wire and then you can use thicker wire if you want because uh, this is what I had next to me so I, I use like small wire and then that's it now at this point I'm going to just transfer uh, transfer threads sorry and I'll do the sparse well more or less the classic variation of pheasant tail at least for me and for many people that I know, I'll transfer to orange thread because I want to finish off with orange color uh, as a hotspot. Obviously, you can use uh, any other thread. You can add legs, you can add uh, wing case cover, you can add so many things. There, there are so many variations to this fly. Uh, I do so many variations but this is the basic one and to be honest I don't think it's necessary to have too many of them in your box 
the most important thing when it comes to nymph is at what depth are fish feeding and are you presenting your nymph at that right depth. Uh, for example, grayling uh, as opposed to trout is bottom, more bottom oriented uh, while trout is uh, because it has eyes that are a bit above the mouth line so it's more oriented to eat uh, stuff that are above it while grayling can eat stuff that are under it well the trout will do the same but less than grayling so uh, if you're presenting the fly under the level that where the trout is feeding it's more likely that it's not going to react to your nymph if you're uh, presenting your fly in the level of the trout's feeding it's going to react better or it's if it's above the level it's also going to to react probably now i'm just going to finish the fly because this is a super simple fly it cannot be more simple than this uh, i'm using thin thread in this case it's 12 zero vivas orange uh, it allows me to make two with finish knots with like four or five six turns whatever without creating too big hotspot here i hate to see too big hotspot i don't know why i did it myself before but i just like to make it a little bit delicate so as you can see this is slim fly it's going to sink through the water column very fast almost as perdigon not as fast but almost there it's going to catch you so many fish because it has general coloration to it uh, you have a couple of triggers first of all pheasant tail it works like magic then you have real or artificial peacock as i have it here artificial one i stub and then you have third part it's a hotspot orange one or chartreuse one or whatever you like i like orange or pink to be honest I didn't experiment too much with those hotspots here. Orange and pink, pink works, works fine, and I don't, don't think fish uh, minds uh, too much. Maybe I'm wrong, of course. So this one is general pattern, so it's hair, hair's ear, of course. But this one is more slender, more delicate, and it sinks faster. That's for sure. I mean, if you, if you use the same hook, same bead, this one will sink faster to the hair's ear. Now let's go to, into the hairs here and tell a couple of things about it. Just uh, for the presentation, I'm going to use the same hook but not the same bead. This was 3.5 bead, this is 3, 3 mm bead. You can see the difference. And obviously this one will take away a, a little bit more of the body of the fly and this one will leave you with more, uh, with more place to work. To, to tie your fly now for the hairs ear i'm gonna just use uh same thing as i did here uh i'm gonna use the same thread although i can change the wire if i want but in this case i want it so for the tail i'll use cocktail leon it's again near me you can use partridge you can use uh i don't know some cock feather whatever you want you can you choose to use nothing just so you'll have what's warm and tight sparsely you don't need your tail to imitate extended body you need tail to imitate tail if you do too thick tail and too long tail it's gonna it's more likely to imitate another like the bigger fly then it's going to imitate your tail so i'm going to add wire same one copper uh, i forgot to mention something about tungsten uh, the color color of it i really think that like two color of tungstens are more more or less enough for most people uh, i'm excluding competitors here because they they fish uh, under stress i was a competitor competitor as well and uh, you always think like what if i did this what if i did that so you'll have many variations of flies in your box but a couple of them you will use more than any other so for me it's pheasant tail before everything else and then uh, hair's ear and maybe heron nymph and something like that so tungsten i love i like silver i like copper that's it like uh, many people would say oh uh, the black one is the best one mm, i haven't caught too many fish in black 
mostly because I lost faith in it, to be honest, like in my early stages of using those different colors. But I found out that like, if I compare myself, my results with the results of other people, I don't think I will catch more or less fish if I was using just another deed. So for example, I would use silver for shiny days and copper for dull days. Of course, I would just switch from time to time. And there is one more color I like. It's a metallic pink. It's an amazing color. Uh, so more or less, these are three, my, three of my favorite colors. Now let's go with tying of the hairs here. Uh, sorry, I'm gonna disappoint you from the beginning, maybe. Uh, for the abdomen, I'm gonna use my mixture with squirrel. This is size 14 hook, so I want fur to be less coarser. And on the bigger hook, you can use hair's fur because it's a little bit more coarser. I mean, you can find some fine hairs there, but usually, especially from the back side, it's a little bit coarser. Now, you can choose to dub it uh, a bit loosely, like I just did here. The reason behind it is to make it look more, let's call it buggier, but I think it more uh, it's going to represent more like a pupa is pupa or something uh, then it would represent mayfly because mayflies they have those slim nice bodies pupas they're like thicker more fat and uh, yeah that's that's more or less it so i'm just gonna wind up this and i'm going to use it almost all the way to the bead as you can see i mean it is next to the bead but there is a slight gap over here now i'm gonna rub it Okay, I go with my ribs like so. As you can see, the, the wire blends in, like it's almost invisible. So this is just for reinforcing it. Although it's not necessary because I'm using GSP here. So GSP would like, I can press on it and I don't need ribs with some materials. Now I'm just gonna do the web finish knot just for the, let's, I don't want it to get unwinded or whatever. Now you can do uh, cdc legs it's definitely gonna add a lot of movement here and this is what i prefer to be honest i like cdc legs on my nymphs on most of my nymphs but i won't like catch a bunch of it just catch a couple of strands like so six seven of them and use it here that's it now because this is a hair's ear i'm gonna use hair's ear masks and I'm going to use this one, like from the forehead part. You can use ears from, for the body, but for the thorax part, for the legs, this is the best part, I think. It's uh, stiffer, not so fine, definitely, but it makes nice buggy effect, as you will see. Uh, I will use dubbing twister because I'm going to make a dubbing loop right now. So, one two turns and then a couple of turns to lock everything down now i'm gonna just let everything hang until i prepare my uh, fur for the legs you can do the same thing with partridge you can do the same thing with the cdc as well but I'm, i chose to do just for the sake of the video uh, i'm gonna do the with the rabbit take your fur obviously you want to, to remove the under fur so Take it firmly. I failed to do that at first. So take firmly tips of your hair and just remove the under fur. You can save it for later. It's a wonderful thing for bodies. Now I want to remove all those like some some are straight here, but like remove under fur as much as you can. Okay. I'm using nails for that as well. Now I'm gonna just reattach it here and then take under fur again and again and again. So now when I'm left with only guard hair, that's what I'm gonna use. Now you don't want them to be too long, otherwise you you make a dry fly with a tungsten bead. You don't want to do that. So just I'll I'll use a little bit of this black part. And I'll use this yellow part with black tips. So more or less uh, wet fly pr proportions. 
So I'm just going to use my scissors and cut it just under the black tip. As you can see, that's what I just did. And now be careful because you don't want to, to lose those hairs. So pinch them between two threads. As you can see, it's pinched. Keep them together. Now, just try to put them closer to the nail first and then just divide them, make them go cover the longer portion of the thread. So, okay, if you put them just together and spin them, it's good, they, they're gonna tangle around each other and you don't want that. So, make this as a almost like a hackle. Now, you can push those ends, but not too much because those ends will actually bend around the thread and when you cinch the thread down it will actually lock the hair better it, it won't be easily pulled out now spin the uh, spin the twister and then just move your fingers and as you can see I got like hackle and this hackle is very very cool for nymphs and just I'm gonna wind it around and after each turn I'm gonna just cinch it down and see how my nymph turns out as you can see they are going nicely now go I'm going down the B to move all those hairs a little bit okay that's it now I'm going to spin the dubbing rope thread with my thread for tying and I'll do it twice just for the sake of the fly being more durable. That's it. Now I I have a couple of options as well. One of the options is just whip pinch the fly and that's it. Second option is change the thread make a hot spot. Third one is be lazy, do a wet finish knot with some dubbing, and for that matter, I'm just gonna use the underfur that I just they just uh, plucked out this gar out of the guard here. So that's how I'm gonna cover the knot, hide it, and make it less visible. So you don't need too much of that because this part here is not too big. Okay, as for the tying part, it's more or less done. I mean, not more or less, it's done, definitely. So, as you can see, you can see this is the fly. Okay, now, let's compare it to the pheasant tail and see what are the main differences here. As I, as I was mentioning, this one, the pheasant tail is definitely more slim. It's gonna go faster through the water surf, through the water column, gonna sink faster. But this one is going to be more like, a, like an anchor. So, for example, if you have windy conditions, uh, this fly, as opposed to pheasant tail, will actually be pulled out much more harder by the wind than the pheasant tail. So, this one can anchor your other small flies, for example, and uh, you, you will feel them better. So, you can use this one with a lot of resistance in the water to hold down your smaller flies. And you can use heavier fly, which is easier to cast, of course, uh, to fish more shallower water, because this one will sink less as opposed to this one. Not like if they had the same beads, this one would still uh, sink faster. Now, the reason why I'm not using hair's ear or well hair's face hair guard hairs for the legs is because they're stiff, like you better use them for dry flies honestly like make hackle out of it and use them for dry flies uh, CDC will give life it will actually also slow down the sinking rate of your nymph it won't have as much resistance as, as this one but still you'll be able to fish uh, more shallow water with heavier nymph uh, important things about those flies are just keep them as durable as you can so use thicker wire, uh, counter rib everything. Don't need to counter rib this one. 
uh, keep them simple because you're going to lose a lot of those flies and go fishing as much as you can and the most important thing about these nymphing things is the weight as i told you in, during this video it's the weight where you present your flies uh, observe the fish if the fish is going left and right eating those naturals you should present your fly definitely in the level of the fish if the fish is rising halfway to the surface and eating something over there you should present your nymph above the level of the fish maybe even rise the nymph when it comes to the fish just tighten the the the, the whole system's whole setup so the, the flies will raise up to the surface and the fish will intercept them along the way if you see fish tailing which means tail up head down then you know what to do obviously it's feeding below its level so just use heavier stuff that will bounce along the bottom think have a miscon mix misconception about nymphing it's like oh i need to drag my nymphs along the bottom all the time no no you don't actually uh as i was evolving through my nymphing uh i started uh, like i started with like very heavy nymphs very large nymphs like size 8 size 10 uh, size 12 and now i consider size 12 to be rather large uh, where i will say that maybe okay size is size 14 as this one and size 16 because on these two sizes you can add size 4 bead you can add size 3.5 you can add 3 millimeter bead so you can fish like a lot of different waters with just two sizes of flies and usually that's just my personal opinion you don't need to match the exact insect when you're nymphing usually most of the time it's just a presentation that's not right that's why you're not catching fish usually just get the depth right you'll catch the fish uh, sometimes you're fishing where there is no fish fish is maybe in fast water or sometimes where maybe fish is in the slow water anyway find the right depth and that's it um sizes i said 14 16 and 18 for summer months some people who fish in winter they will use those smallies in, in winter too but i don't fish winter as as often so 14 16 perfect 18 you will need it 12 from time to time if you need to add maybe two beads on the fly yes you can use definitely 12. so guys i don't want to make you stay much longer with me i hope you enjoyed this video if you did please give it a like share it subscribe comment down below i appreciate your comments very much uh, sometimes maybe i i just don't see it so excuse me if i don't reply immediately on your comments i will always i always try to, to reply immediately as soon as i see it at least and uh, thank you very much again and see you next week